when must you use simultaneous equations when doing Doppler effect calculations? In previous videos in this playlist, we applied the new formula, the Doppler effect formula, and when we substituted variables into our equation, for example, over here, you can see that we only had one unknown variable. Like in this example, for example, you can see that FL was the only variable that I didn't know. However, there are certain instances in the Doppler effect section where you will have two unknowns. And this is usually when there are two listeners or two observers, and they are listening to the same source. That's generally the case. It might not be the only case, but it's generally what will happen. So we have two unknowns. We need to set up two equations, and then we need to solve for our variables simultaneously. So if you take this question, for instance, which I will do with you, we can see that we have a police car moving at a constant speed on a straight horizontal road. The siren of the car emits sound source of a constant frequency. So the police car is the source. Each of the two observers, A and B, standing some distance apart, records the frequencies of the detected sound. So what's important to note in this particular example is that the police car is the source. It is what is making the sound. Observer A and observer B, these are both listeners. So we don't only have one listener, we have two. So when listening our variables, we'll have frequency of source, we'll have frequency of listener, and another frequency of listener. This is a clear giveaway that you need to use simultaneous equations. They tell you that observer A, so listener A, records a frequency of 690 hertz. So this is listener A. The frequency of the listener for listener A is 690 hertz. Just going to put in brackets here, this is listener A. And Observer B or listener B records a frequency of 610 hertz, that is B. They do not tell you the frequency of the source. We know that the source is moving. We know that they, the source will have a particular velocity. We don't know what that is though. We don't know the frequency of the source. I'm going to put a question mark over there as well. We know that both listeners are stationary. So this listener has a velocity of zero, and this listener has a velocity of zero. The question says, determine the speed of the police car. Take the speed of sound in air as 340 meters per second. So that is just normal V. Normal V is 340 meters per second. So based on the information that I've been given and based on the Doppler effect formula, Let's see if I can substitute into the equation. Now, let's pretend you didn't actually understand in the beginning of this video, or you still maybe don't understand now why I need to apply the formula twice. Why I'm saying that for simultaneous equations, for when you have two listeners, there'll be two formulas. Let's see. So if you start to substitute into the equation and you say, okay, frequency of the listener, let's do observer A records a frequency of 690 hertz. And you say, okay, well, observer A, he's listening to the sound. So frequency of the listener is 690 hertz. Then we said, take the speed of sound in A to be 340. That is V. That is just normal V is 340. So 340 at the top of the equation, 340 at the bottom of the equation. Then if you read the question further, you will see, and if you read this question here, read it carefully, they do not tell me the frequency of the source. Please don't get confused and think that one of these is the source and one of these is the listener. They say A, observer A, records a frequency of 690. So that is frequency of listener A. Observer B records a frequency of 610. This is frequency of listener B. So we don't actually have frequency of the source. It's an unknown. We know that the listeners is stationary. So here we're substituting in for observer A. This is the frequency of the listener for A. VL is zero. The listener is stationary. We do not know what VS is. Okay. So can you see, I know I must, I must still substitute these signs in here. I'll do it in a second. But can you see that I don't only have one unknown variable? I have two unknown variables. And what the question actually wants me to, um, to get is determine the speed of the police car. So we are looking for VS. That's what we're looking for. We may need to find FS as well. They may cancel out. We'll see what happens now. Okay, but let's carry on substituting. So essentially what we do in a case like this is you write your Doppler effect formula down once. That gets you one out of the six marks. You see it's six marks. That gets you one out of the six. Then 
we're going to substitute. And I've started doing that for observer A. Before I can carry on, I need to know the direction in which this police car is moving. We haven't determined that yet. They don't tell me in the question. If you read the question again, they do not tell me if the police car is moving towards observer B or if the police car is moving towards observer A. However, there is a way that we can figure it out based on what they gave me. So we are told that observer A records a frequency of 690 hertz and observer B records a frequency of 610 hertz. Do you notice that one of the observers, namely observer A, records a higher frequency than observer B? Remember what I explained to you in the explanation videos of the Doppler effect. If you haven't watched it, check the link down below. But what I explained is if we have a stationary listener, and both of these listeners are stationary, they're standing still, and the source is moving towards the stationary listener, that listener will observe a higher frequency than what is emitted by the police car. And if the police car or the source is moving away from a stationary listener, that listener will observe a lower frequency. So essentially what's happening is we have police car, let's say it's moving towards A, because it's moving towards A, the sound waves are getting compressed in front of A and they are increased behind A or closer to B. I hope that makes sense. And my drawing is not great, but basically here, the wavelengths are smaller because the police car is moving that way, which means that the frequency is bigger. Remember, smaller wavelength, bigger frequency. And if you look at where B is, observer B, yeah, bigger wavelengths because the police car, the source is moving away from B. So the wavelength here gets bigger, bigger wavelength, therefore smaller frequency. So we can tell based on the frequencies that they gave us that the police car is moving towards observer A, so it's going towards A, and away from B. I hope that that makes sense. And you need to know that in order to carry on substituting. Now remember, we have been substituting in here for A. So we said the frequency, observer A records a frequency with 690, that's frequency of the listener is 690. V is 340 and 340, top and bottom. The listener is stationary, so VL is zero. The listener is not moving. The source is moving. We're looking for VS. We don't know FS. Now we need to substitute in the correct signs. Now, again, in my explanation video, I taught you how I remember how to get the signs. I remember using this diagram over here. If you don't know how this diagram works, please go watch my previous video. So for observer A, remember we said the source is moving towards the listener. So the source, look at my diagram, source is moving towards the listener. So we're going to put a minus by the source. The source is moving. That's why the source gets a minus. Source is moving towards listener. According to my diagram, if the source here moves towards the listener, you put a minus by the source. What have you put on the bottom? the top gets the opposite. Now, we cannot substitute anymore. That's all we can substitute. So where you would get your marks over here is you actually get a mark for subbing on the left-hand side and a mark for subbing on the right-hand side. Can you see how you've already gotten three out of six marks? But remember, we need to do a substitution again, but for observer B. So, you don't need to write out the formula again. We've already written it once. Once is enough. Now, for observer B, what is my frequency of my listener for observer B? You don't have to write the formula again. I'm just writing it again over here just so we can see what I need to sub in. So what is the frequency of my listener for B? Here they gave it to me, 610. Just the same as the previous one. We don't know what FS is. I'm leaving it blank. We know that V, top and bottom, is 340. It's given down here in the question. They're both 340. Again, the listener is stationary. B is not moving. And again, we don't know what VS is. We don't know what that is. Now, to figure out the signs, let's see. The source, 
here's the source, is moving away from B. We figured that out earlier. So remember my diagram, listener, source. Okay. This is just something that you have to memorize. The source is moving away. Here's the listener. Okay, here's the listener. Here's the source. The source is moving away from the listener. Okay, here's the source. So put your finger on source. The source isn't going to want to go towards the listener. No, the S isn't going to want to go towards the L. The S wants to go away from the L. The source is moving away from the listener. So we are going to substitute in a plus where you see velocity of source. What you do to the bottom, you do the opposite to the top. Always opposites, top and bottom. And can you see that obviously the source is going towards observer A, so that's a minus. The source is going away from B, so it's a plus. So these have opposite signs. And you get mark number four and mark number five for substituting. So what is amazing about these simultaneous equations in physics for the Doppler effect is you get five out of six 83,3333% for just writing the formula, substituting correctly, substituting correctly. You get one mark for getting the answer. So doing all the mathematics and getting the answer for VS, all of that work is worth one mark. So if you stop here, you get five out of six. But I'm going to show you how I do the mathematics from this point onwards. So here are my two equations. Equation number one and equation number two. Now, I find the easiest way to deal with something like this is to do the following method of simultaneous or simultaneous equations. I'm first going to simplify each fraction as far as possible. So, 690, then at the top, 340 plus zero is 340, and at the bottom is 340. 40 minus Vs, and take note how we are multiplying by Fs. Now, what you should know about multiplying fractions is you multiply the top and the top and the bottom and the bottom, like that. So if we're multiplying by Fs, we're basically just popping Fs up in the numerator over there. So it's 340 Fs, okay? 340 multiplied by Fs. I hope that makes sense to you. I've just kind of cleaned up that fraction. I'm going to do the same for the next one. So 340 minus 0 is 340. We're multiplying it by Fs over 1. So top times top, I'm going to put the Fs up here. Bottom times bottom, this is just going to be 340 plus Vs. Okay, that's equation number two. Now, what I decide to do is I decide to make Fs the subject of the formula. Okay, in both of them. So essentially, I'm trying to get Fs alone by itself. How do I do that? Well, it's here in the numerator of my fraction. So I'm first going to try and get rid of this denominator. We are dividing by 340 minus Vs. So what's the inverse of that? Multiply by 340 minus Vs. So I know this is incorrect mathematical language, but just to simplify, take it over, which as you know is incorrect mathematical language, but if the inverse operation of dividing by 340 minus Vs is multiplying by 340 minus Vs. And on this side, I've got 340 Fs at the top. Okay, just take note, this is 340 multiplied by Fs. I'm going to do the same on this side, 610. This is divide by 340 plus Vs. So I'm going to multiply by 340 plus Vs. And I got 340 multiplied by Fs. Now just stop for a second. I want you to take a look at those two equations. Can you see that equation number one and equation number two are actually now both equal to the same thing? 340 Fs. 340 Fs. So sure, you can get Fs by itself. You would divide both sides by 340 to get Fs by itself. And then you've got an Fs by itself. But think about this, grade 12s. If they are both, if both equations are equal to the same thing, you are allowed to make them equal to each other. Okay? So it's kind of like me saying A is equal to B, but B is equal to C. Okay, 
if A is equal to B and B is equal to C, do you see that they're both equal B? So that means that I can make these two parts equal each other. I hope that makes sense. Some people struggle with that concept. But what that means is because they're both equal 340 times Fs, therefore I can make the other parts of the equation equal each other. Okay, maths is amazing. We love maths. I always tell my students that science is basically applied maths, and here it is. Now, how would you solve for Vs? You can see we've actually eliminated one of our variables. We've gotten rid of Fs. Amazing. How would you solve for Vs? You just do normal maths, normal solving. Distribute this in here, distribute that in there. Remember, treat Vs like an x, okay? So 690 times negative Vs is negative 690 Vs. Then you get all your Vs's to the one side. It's like getting all your x's to the one side. You get all your Vs's to the one side. And final step, divide this by this. And we get 20,92 meters per second. Now, I invite you, if you like to do simultaneous, simultaneous in a different way, you can think of a better way, please be my guest and do it. Remember, and this is crazy, all of this, is just to get the answer. And it's just the answer that gets you that final one mark. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Please check out the links below for more lessons. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. It means a lot to me when you become one of my official students. And I can't wait to see you in another video very soon. Bye everyone.